everybody, this is Jenny, and we are doing a series um, on the Facebook group on how to rasterize. And part one is really just going to talk about what is rasterization and why do you want to do it. So rasterizing is a technique we use when making white toner transfers to give our artwork areas of negative space. And negative space refers to open areas of the design where the shirt itself is exposed. So let me bring you in Photoshop and show you what I mean. So this image here, you would never want to print an image like this because it has more than three fingers of non-rasterized space. Most often negative space refers to open areas of the design where the shirt itself is exposed. Um, this is the natural space between design elements, fonts, etc. But on some Im images like this one or on photographs, we don't have any open space at all. And if we apply an image like this to a shirt, the results will be heavy and non-breathable and it will crack. And so let me show you a quick example of that. So when you have a, a shirt that doesn't have any rasterization like this one, you can hear, you know, just how crunchy it sounds. It's not a good sound, and it actually feels pretty rough as well. But then when you have one that's been rasterized, for example, all of these, you can tell the shirt just doesn't have that. You know, these have all been rasterized, and I'll show you some photos of these, but it the, just doesn't have that same sound. It just feels a lot softer. It washes better. Um, it's just a better quality shirt and your clients and customers will enjoy it a lot more. Okay. So here's an image here. This one has no rasterization and this is the image we're gonna be working with today. And then this image right here has a little partial rasterization in Photoshop. And that does take a long time. Um, so to give you an example, here is the image that I imported into ProRip, and this is the mask that I made. Um, so I had to go in and put partial transparency in different places. So it takes a bit of time, but there are ways that you can do this in ProRip where it doesn't take very much time at all. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. So this one, like I said, this has no rasterization at all. This one's got partial transparency in Photoshop. These images right here, they have um, just standard, consistent, non-variable rasterization, and that this is just using the general settings in uh, ProRip. This one is whole rasterization. I used to use the default settings. And then this one is stripe rasterization, and I use the default settings for that too. And then the last way we can do this is with knock me blackout and knock me color out or ProRip also has a section on distressing. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna touch on those today. We're not gonna go into it fully because we're going to cover those topics in our future videos in this series. Okay, so here we are in ProRip and now I'm going to explain how to achieve the three ways of rasterization. So this first method, we're going to apply a consistent raster pa pattern over the entire design. Um, this is a non-variable type of rasterization. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our queue. So we're in queue. And you can see there's a bunch of different settings that you can choose from. And in this case, we are going to start with Uninet two-step standard withholds. Okay, and so now let's bring in our image. And so Uninet has created these preset modes just for new users. So just with the stripes or hole option, it's going to give you the rasterization that you need, and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to fit to the screen. Then I like to center mine on the page. And now I'm just going to hit this check mark. Okay. 
And this is has applied that pattern. So let me just kind of quickly show you um, that there's different ways that you can um, adjust things. So you'll go over here to color layer. I just double clicked on the image. Let me do that again. So we're just going to double click on the image. We're going to go into the color layer, ink removal, and this is where you can change your frequency of holes, the angle of the holes, or your shape. And you see there is a ton of shapes. Now this automatic um, setting, the one that's preset for you, is just going to use inverted rounds. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to right click and rip only. Then I'm going to view the raw data. Hit OK. And then this is what it looks like. It just gives you a nice consistent pattern of holes across the entire image. And you can do the exact same thing with stripes. So this time we're going to check Uninet two-step standard with stripes. Here it is here. And we're going to pull in our image. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to fit it to the page again. I'm going to center it. And this time, um, I'm just going to show you again really quickly. I'm just going to double click on it here. And I'm going to show you where you can change your angle. So color layer, ink removal, and this is where you would change the angle of your lines. But this is the standard default setting, and that's what we're going to use. So now I'm going to go up here and right click, rip only, and then we're going to view the raw data. Then hit OK. And then now we have our stripes. And you can see there's just a consistent pattern of stripes across the page. And that white underneath is going to be the color of your text fold. So that is how you create consistent, non-variable rasterization throughout the entire image using ProRip. Now let's talk about um, how you would use a distressed file or how to use the distress function in ProRip. Now Joe's already done a video on that, so I'm just going to quickly show you um, what that would look like. So I'm just going to go to two-step standard. Let me go ahead and bring it in. So here's our distress. it to the screen, center it. So to do that, we'll go to Jobs, CAD Link Effects, Distressed. And this is the settings that I used last time. Again, I, you, you can go see Joe's video, or I did a much longer video on that a while back that you can look at. But let's go ahead and hit OK. Then we're going to go over to Jobs. OK, so now we're going to go to Jobs production plugins, and we're going to knock out the black from that distress texture. All right, so that's all we're going to do. We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to rip it. Now we'll view the raw data. And now you can see where all the white space is. Um, here, that is the distress texture along with the variable holes from the knockout black, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. Now let's see what happens when we bring in our image that I had already put in some transparency from Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. I'm going to 
going to go ahead and set it to the page, center it on the page. And again, um, it's automatically checked for you. It's automatically going to find um, with these settings, you know, just the default settings, it's already going to determine that there's transparency. So now I'm just going to show you how that works. We're going to get a rip only. And we're going to view the raw data. And so here you can see that depending on the amount of transparency I added in Photoshop or Corel or whatever software that you have, it's going to change your hole sizes accordingly. So you can see the holes are a little bit smaller here because I use like 10% opacity or 20% in some places. So again, you can see that the hole size varies based on the amount of transparency that you add uh, in your design software. And here is the original image from Photoshop uh, where I added all the transparency in, and here is a copy of that mask. So that was all the work that I did to get to that point. So I'm going to remove this one, and we're going to talk about Knock Me Blackout. So I'm just going to use, again, Uninet two-step standard. I'm going to bring in my image. Set it to the page, center it, and then I'm going to go Jobs, Production Plugins, Knock Me Blackout. And so that's, that's all we have to do. It automatically knows how much black to knock out. Um, I'm going to hit OK, and then View Raw Data. So you can see here, it's knocked out all of the black in the image uh, and some of the gray tones, and it's applied a variable rasterization. So depending on the amount of transparency that Knock Me Blackout gives us, it's going to vary the whole size accordingly. So all this white space that you see here is going to be your shirt. And you notice, like I said, that we've got different sized holes um, that we can use. Now, if you're saying, well, gosh, this looks like it could be three fingers. What do we do about that? Um, then you can go into Knock Me Color Out, which we will be explaining in um, a video coming up. And then you can add some transparency by playing with the sliders and Knock Me Color Out. Okay, so let's take a quick look at Knock Me Color Out. Now that we've knocked out the black, let's see what happens um, when we knock out some color so we can get some rasterization over here in this area um, that's more than three fingers. So we're going to go up here to Jobs, Production Plugins, Knock Me Color Out. And again, I'm just going to do this really quickly. So it defaults to remove white. So if you see here, all the white has been removed, and that is not what we want. So we're going to click on this square, and what I'm going to do is take this color here, because it's very similar to this teal up here, and I'm going to pull that down, because what I don't want to do is pull out all of the teal. Um, so I had already made that color over here, so I'm just going to use that color. And then I'm just going to slide my underbase over a little bit. Let me just show you the underbase here. So I moved it to about 232. And if you look at the show underbase, you can see that in this gray area, we've now got some transparency, which will give us some holes. So let's take a look at how that looks once it's ripped. All right, I'm going to right click. Rip only, right click, view raw data. And now we've got some holes here in this area of blue. Let me show you if we click on this black up here, we can see it. So now we've got some additional holes uh, giving us a more soft shirt that's more comfortable to wear.